Come on, pork pie. Why don't you give it a go? You might find a facet of your personality you never knew existed. I know all about my facets. Thank you very much. <laughs> Every week is some newfangled idea. Now you're telling us just by reading somebody's writing you could tell something about their personality. Last time it was about body language. Ah, oh, that's true. <laughs> that's one. Even the way someone sits can tell you a lot about a person's inner workings. <laughs> my inner workings are private, and there's nothing wrong with my handwriting. Tell him, Desmond. That's true. Popeye has always been a devotee of the three R's. Mm. What? Reading, writing, and rhythmic? No, no, no. Rum, racing, and rum. <laughs> <laughs> so, go on then, Matt. What'd you make of that, then? Tony, you got nothing better to do? Uh, no. <laughs> um, at first glance, Tony, it seems that you're an impulsive and highly creative person. Mm. These large circles above your eyes show a very outgoing personality. <laughs> so do these large ones below my eyes, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> right, Matt, do your worst, mate. Hello, Dad. Hello. Matthew, Uncle Paul. Hi, Tony. Hello. Hello. All right, Sean. All right, check this out, right? Matthew is going to tell me all about my personality just from looking at my handwriting. We should just look under your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Ambrose is well dread. What, he says that in that book? No, it's what he wrote down. <laughs> I can tell from Sean's writing that he is a highly intelligent individual with deep sensual undertones, which are denoted by these big loops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Should I be a model or what? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> or what? Oi, Lee, have you got big loops? Well, I've never had any complaints, Glor. <laughs> Hey, Adiz, did you put out an APB on Shirley? Cos I've just seen her and Beverly dashing up the high street like they was going for the world record. I mean, it went past me. And I was in the motor. <laughs> well, you can't blame her. She's probably trying to escape from Beverly. I mean, I would outrun Linford Christie just to get away from that woman. <laughs> well, I hope she hasn't invited her back here. You know, I don't allow gossip in the shop. Yeah. Quite right, too, Desmond. I hear that Beverly <laughs> was at Clarice the other day, yeah. and she spoke for half an hour without drawing a yeah. breath. And she came in with that young man from the news agency. No, yeah. so, you don't mean that youngster who went up. He, he, him! Beverly, <laughs> best you come upstairs and have a cup of tea. He, come in! Do, do you think he's a good woman? What on earth is going on? I'm going to get to the bottom of this. It can't be. You're dead. Good afternoon, <laughs> gentlemen. Won't leave much to the imagination. <laughs> Do you want a bet? When Alex sees me in this, his imagination's gonna run riot. Same <laughs> <laughs> way your mum and dad will if they kept you wearing it. Shirley, lock up your daughter. <laughs> I think she saw the dress, Glow. Look, Beverly, just calm down. Gloria, put the kettle on. Beverly's had a bit of a shock. What's that? She looks like she's seen a ghost. We have a devil ghost. <laughs> but it's a small rum, Shirley. Purely for medicinal purposes, you understand. <laughs> What's going on? You haven't really seen a ghost, have you? As large as life. Uh, no, not a ghost, just a man. A man we haven't seen for more than 30 years. Joseph Toussaint Montpellier. Better known as... Calypso? <laughs> I wonder if I may speak with Shirley Plachette. Shirley Ambrose. <laughs> She's not here at the moment. I'm Desmond Ambrose, her husband. <laughs> Perhaps I can... Oh, yes! You used to be in that jazz band. Uh, what were they called? The Georgetown Steamers. <laughs> With that odd little man. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Top Hat. It was the Georgetown Dreamers. And it's poor pie, not <laughs> Top Hat. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's been a long time. Not long enough. Uh, tell Shirley I'll come in to see her tomorrow at three. There's something I'd like to speak to her about. A private matter. Goodbye, gentlemen. <laughs> Shirley! 
Maloof? Who was that then? Yeah. And what do you want with Mum? He has the bearing of a man of great importance. Bit of a flashy dresser and all. <laughs> Pops, what's going on? Calypso. He's come for your mother after all these years. <laughs> Calypso? Who's Calypso? Who's that? Who's that? Every year, Calypso would come to the masquerade in Guyana, singing his love songs, telling his stories, romancing everything in a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> that devil could charm the birds out of the trees. <laughs> the Casanova, eh? Nah, your father was a bit of a Casanova. No, Calypso was something entirely different. Mm -hmm. He only had to sing, and any girl he wanted was his. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A bit like Julio Iglesias. <laughs> Speak for yourself, love. <laughs> Nine months after Calypso's visits, there'd be a population explosion. <laughs> <laughs> that man was a walking baby boom. <laughs> Desmond used to call him the Pied Piper of Passion. Till one year, he set his sights on Shirley. Mm. I couldn't tell you what Desmond called him then. <laughs> he had a voice like warm honey and molten lava. <laughs> and his guitar sounded like angels plucking their harps. Devil's more like. Yeah, but what's all this got to do with Mum? Look, I better go upstairs and check on Shirley and Beverly. And... Oh, oh I did. Yeah. Yeah. We'll look out to things down here, mate. Right, Popeye. You get the SP on this Calypso it. geezer. All right. One year, Calypso saw a pretty young girl that he hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. A beautiful, warm and friendly girl. Mm -hmm. The preacher's daughter. Oh, you mean Mum? Yeah, she had started to come to dances to hear your father and me play. That's Shirley, all right. Warm, beautiful, intelligent and friendly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But with very poor taste in music. <laughs> <laughs> Then came the time for the masquerade, the carnival. Mm -hmm. A small boat appeared on the horizon. Calypso had come to weave his musical web again. <sighs> I've got no kids, please. <laughs> Calypso had made up in his mind that before the masquerade was over, Shirley would be his prize. So what was it to be then, eh? Pistols at dawn for him and Des, yeah? Calypso's weapons were his songs. Women were defenseless against them. And I suppose oh. all Desmond had was his trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but surely Mum wasn't having any of this, man. Calypso's powers over women verged on the supernatural, Sean. It was like magic. And I expect you had a similar magical effect. <laughs> well... You only had to say hello to a girl and, hey, presto, she disappears. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle well, your mother brushed him off, but Calypso didn't give up that easily. He had a reputation to live up to. Yeah, it's difficult. I know. Shut up. <laughs> if ever a girl resisted him, Calypso would simply write a song just for her. He never failed, ever. Did he ever write one for Mum? One moonlight night, Calypso set sail to play on one of the islands. He asked Shirley to go with him. Shirley refused. Mm -hmm. She said she was going to stand by Desmond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Calypso was furious and swore that when he returned, he would have written his most passionate love song. <laughs> just for Shirley. <laughs> Steamy or what, eh? <laughs> Sailed away on the night tide and was never seen again. Mm. Oh, Mills and Boone, eat your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, Mrs Ambrose? Well, his guitar was washed up on some remote shore months later, but there was no sign of Calypso. Until now. <laughs> <laughs> He's just paid us a visit. If you don't mind, I'd like to have a word with my wife. Alone. Come on, Beverly. I think I should stay here and give Shirley my support. <laughs> then we better get you home. The past always Ooh. catches up on you, Ambrose. <laughs> Don't let her pass near any naked flames. <laughs> so he's come for you after all this time. 
your Caribbean Casanova. <laughs> Pied Piper of Passion. <laughs> well, if you think he's just gonna stroll in here and strum a few cards of some dusty old love song and glide out here with my wife, he got another thing coming. Oh. You got me bags packed already? How you know what he wanted? He asked for you personally, so he didn't want a haircut. <laughs> Say, coming back tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock. Ah. <laughs> well, Shirley, here's to the last 22 hours of our marriage. <laughs> You see, in the old days, people had to make their own entertainment. Calypsonians would come with their love songs, telling their stories and gossip from all over. Oh, well, I guess, like, rap music's the music of the streets. I suppose Calypso's the music of the islands, yeah? Well, what about this Joseph Toussaint Montpellier, then? Was he really that hot? Who knows? You take a balmy night and the moonlight shining on the bay. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Check it. The air tick with the scent of jasmine and honeysuckle. <laughs> and a sprinkling of young couples in love. Mm -hmm. Well, who knows, eh? On a night like that, even a Georgetown Dreamers would sound good, eh? Calypso's <laughs> <laughs> weird and wonderful powers are just part of folklore. No, it is all true. I have first hand knowledge. Oh, well, tell us then. Well, there was this girl, Yvette Xavier. Yeah, mm. I remember her. Boys used to flock to her like bees round a honeypot. Mm. A tall, statuesque girl from a very good family. She'd have nothing to do with the local boys. You, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Calypso. She was a very strong girl and she resisted his advances. Yeah, well, good for her. But Calypso wasn't a man to be put off that easily. One night, he stole into her garden and stood beneath her bedroom window and he sang his song. Oh, one he'd written just for her, right? Yeah, so what happened next? Twins. <laughs> that was just idle gossip. And you, Dad, I suppose you was in the honeysuckle bush watching all this. No, no, pork pie was. Uh <laughs> well, I'm going over to see if Beverly's feeling better. Yeah, well, we're clear right, Mum. Thanks. Uh, uh, well, children, I suppose this is the last meal we'll have together as a family. Oh, cheer up, Dad. Look, Beverly said once Mum had gone, she'd come round and cook for us. Thanks, Gloria. That's just what I wanted to hear. <laughs> hey, Dad, why don't you write Mum a love song? Eh? Yeah, that'd be sweet. Why don't you give it a go? Me? A love song? <laughs> oh, don't be silly. <laughs> Come on then, Dad, let's hear it. Well, it's not quite ready yet. Come I... on, before Mum gets back. Well, it's just the words. Dad! Just... Surely, surely, you, my girlie. <laughs> Marvin Gaye rests easy in his grave tonight. <laughs> well, if you're all so smart, why don't you do better? Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, we just might. Lee, give me a box, man. Some filled with laughter and some filled with tears. Surely after all we've been through, I'd just like to say that I still love you. <laughs> Girl, you're my one and only. Stay with your man, baby. Don't leave me lonely. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, I don't think this musical thing's gonna work. Uh, <laughs> tell me, Desmond, you haven't got anything yet. Yeah. Yeah. I'll buy you a pair of, uh, a camera, a pair of purple gloves. Oh. <laughs> oh, Shirley, no, nah, that can't be right. Well, come on, let's have a look. Huh? <laughs> no wonder you wouldn't let me analyze your writing. Yeah, I, I wrote it in a hurry. It looks as though you wrote it in the dark. <laughs> no, that's 
Desmond, what you need is a West African high life. You see, we Africans know how to romance our women. Better, better, say you are the Come on, Sean. Let's leave the crew cut crew and get on with it, eh? <laughs> Deserting the sinking ship, are you? Uh, yeah. Beverly <laughs> <laughs> said thanks for... <laughs> Gloria, what is that you almost got on? <laughs> it's new. Don't you like it? I'd like it if there was twice as much of it. <laughs> oh, I'm a big girl now. So why did you buy such a small dress? <laughs> I suppose it is a bit minimal. Sit down, Gloria. <laughs> you know, today, they're all going on about how much someone's handwriting can say about a person. Mm. Yes, but what do you think that dress is saying to all the men you pass in the street? Pretty short conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Every generation think that they invented sex and all the rigmarole that goes with it. That's just fine by me. It's part of life. It's part of growing up. I know a lot has changed since I was your age, but some things will always remain the same. And one day, you'll be talking to your daughter about the same things. She'll say you're being overprotective and that you just don't understand. But hopefully, she'll listen. OK, Mum. Anyway, uh, truth or dare, did you leave Calypso on? <laughs> Every woman likes to be admired, Gloria, young or old. We all send out signals, you know, but sometimes we really don't reckon with the consequences. A smile that turns into a blush, a glance held just too long, an accidental touch that lingers, and before you know it, mm. <laughs> I can't wait to meet him. <laughs> There's my Ambrose, if you look at your watch one more time. Oh, what time is it? It's a pie part of passion not here yet, then. Mm. No, it's <laughs> going on. I'm surprised you're not selling tickets. Oh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, late lunch, Dad. Look, Des, we just wanted to be in your corner just in case there was any rough stuff, you know? Ha! Lee, nothing is going to happen. Typical men always wanted to flex their muscles. Yeah, except for the one that matters. <laughs> sure, and what matters is that we all support the Ambrose family and make sure that this man does not drive a wedge between Desmond and Shirley. I can't believe it, Matt. You actually make sense. He <laughs> come in! He come in! <laughs> <laughs> Lesh, you haven't. Ambrose, Shirley Ambrose. A rose by any other name. Oh. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This rose comes with thorns attached. You, you, Bluebeard. You, now, Desmond, you. that is no way to behave. Now, please, let's make our guest welcome. Oh, certainly, my dear. Ah, flowers. How delightful. <laughs> I'm handling this. Let me take your hat. <laughs> you know, you are right, Shirley. We must make our guests feel welcome. Never let it be said that the Ambrose family don't know how to extend the hand of friendship, after all. It's not every day that you meet a legendary philanderer come to teeth your wife. <laughs> It's been a long time since anyone called me that. It's a Reverend Montpellier these days. So we see, please sit down. So, what's this story about you disappearing? Well, after I sailed from Guyana that night, I was caught in a terrible storm. Mm -hmm. I capsized mm -hmm. and drifted for three days, clinging on to my guitar. Eventually, 
I was picked up by a tramp steamer bound for Brazil. When I got there, I realized that God had spared this sinner for a reason. I decided to dedicate the rest of my life to his good work and stayed on in Brazil to work amongst the poor. You'll have your work cut out for you and pick them, then, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm here on a fundraising mission. And who better to introduce me to the community leaders than Shirley Ambrose, daughter of one of the most respected preachers in Guyana. I'm flattered. I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> Shirley's father ran me out of town more than once. A great man. And Desmond here wasn't doing too badly just now, either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, of course, we didn't know of your um, new calling. <laughs> yes, yes, we are sorry, Reverend. You know, sometimes my husband's mouth works faster than his brains. <laughs> <laughs> Tea, perhaps? No, thank you, Shirley. Uh, Reverend Calypso? Yes? <clears throat> Do you remember that song that you wrote for Mum? Oh, yeah, no! You want to finish your old father off? Oh, <laughs> yes, just a little bit, man. Yes. I've never heard of real Calypso. Really? How quaint. I don't think we should. Oh, go on, show these youngsters yeah. what they've missed. Well, I remember a verse or two. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a D, man. <laughs> I picked up my guitar shell and wrote you this song. It sounds like a ballad girl, but darling, you're wrong. It's an opus to you, surely, without a bandage crew. Whatever they're saying about me, Lord knows I'm not rude. <laughs> You're the preacher's daughter. Darling, we should find the altar. But before we do that, come we go round the back. <laughs> ah. <laughs> And the girls go strolling by Georgetown Sea Wall. Watch behind how them rolling. I just want to ball. <laughs> you young and innocent, surely, but it's not too soon. Two minutes with me, my darling, and I'll change your tune. <laughs> <laughs> but before we do that, come we go around the back. Applaud Shirley, my inspiration. Excuse me. <laughs> my wife. <laughs> From the long hot nights to the ocean breeze to the damp and to the rain of London City. We come from the sun to live in the cold. I miss me, rum. I want my coconut tree. Don't scratch my soul. about you have a toothache? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, Cheryl? Oh, I know, it's those children of ours. I've told you not to let them bother you. I mean, you've got to let go, move on, let them stand on their own two feet. I'm not talking about two feet, Desmond. I'm talking about four. Isn't he cute? It would be cute if the Wellington boot was booting it out the door. <laughs> yes, I know you could say that. I told you before, I don't want a dog. I'm not asking you if you want a dog. It's me that wants the dog. Oh, see, you have the English disease. <laughs> well, I think there are too many dogs in London already, and in tests, eight out of ten pavements would agree with me. <laughs> we don't want a dog in this house. All right, OK, no dog. You agree? Of course, after all, you wear the trousers in this house, Desmond. That's right. 
As long as you remember, they fit me too. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say to me before I start to read this newspaper? No, why you ask? Because you always want to talk to me just as I'm about to read the newspaper. I don't always. Yes, you do. No, I don't. All right. <laughs> okay. I want to talk. You do? <laughs> oh, dear, this looks serious. No, 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 it isn't. You know, I've been helping out at that children's home. Surely get to the point. Well, most of the kids get to go home at the weekend. But there's this one little girl there called Daisy. Did I ever tell you about Daisy? You haven't stopped talking about her since you've been going there. But you see, Daisy hasn't got a home to go to. Her mother abandoned her at birth. And since then, she's been in and out. All right, all right, all right. She can stay the weekend. Ah, oh, yes, God. <laughs> you have a heart after all. Oh, surely you can't keep reading the paper if you're doing that. <laughs> Desmond. What? Look, Daisy is a nice child, but she has one or two behavior problems. Then how many? One or two? <laughs> she's been in and out of care, and as a result, she's unsettled. We have to handle her with kid gloves. Not Wellington boots? Desmond. <laughs> Is she house trained? <laughs> yes. All right, well, it's okay by me. No, Desmond, I'm serious. You have to promise me. Promise you what? Well, promise me you won't get angry and raise your voice. I promise. Promise me you'll be the perfect father figure. Well, aren't I always? Oh, only the day before Father's Day. I promise. <laughs> now, promise me you won't come home drunk after Domino's on Friday. Shirley? Why we don't get a dog instead? <laughs> it would be easier. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies, but my wife will be along shortly. It's a strange word, that, isn't it? What is? Wife. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, husband is a silly word as well. Yes! No, it isn't. <laughs> Husband. We know what band means. We had a band, didn't we, Desmond? And we had Huss in it. No, Popeye. <laughs> Huss is short for house. Would you like to learn something new? No. I'm going to tell you anyway. The band part of the word husband means to dwell. What's dwell? It's a well with a D in front of it. Not a lot of people know that. Dwell is a pretty silly word when you come to think of it. Matthew is a pretty silly word now you've got to mention it. Mention is a pretty silly word once you start to dwell on it. And silly is a silly word. Especially coming from you. But you know what's the silliest word in the whole of the universe, the space and the galaxy? No what? Baba! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, the place is definitely 60s, dude. Excellent. <laughs> is this where you scalp your victims, my man? Scalp? <laughs> you want a haircut? Park your backside on that chair. Okay. I want an afro. Don't you all? <laughs> we don't do afros. Come on, dude. Where have you been? He's been here. <laughs> all right, come on out. Hey! Desmond, what you been doing to Daisy? That is Daisy. <laughs> and he shook me, oh, no. and he shouted, and he screamed. It was horrible. Shirley, he didn't do that. <laughs> you keep out of it, Pope by Desmond. If you did, I think you ought to apologize to Daisy. Do what? Remember what you promise. <laughs> Sorry. <that. laughs> what did he say, Shirley? I never heard him. Louder, Desmond. I'm sorry! <laughs> uh, uh, would you like some money for some sweets, little girl? I've been told not to accept sweets from strange men. Well, he may be a little strange, Daisy, but he is my husband. You'll get used to him. <laughs> oh, Daisy. This is Uncle Pork Pie and Uncle Matthew. They're going to look after you while I do Mrs. Johnson's hair, OK? OK. OK. This is Daisy, gentlemen. She's spending the weekend with us. Hello, Hello Daisy. Daisy. Hi, dudes. <laughs> Daisy, why don't you do our schedule for the weekend? Excellent. Now, Daisy, schedule means? Timetable, plan, order of events. And Americans say schedule. By the way, drop the Daisy. What do we call you, then? I know what I'd like to call her. <laughs> kid. Just call me the kid. That's what everyone else does. What are you reading? 
Good question. Why, I'm reading a book on Greek mythology. Why? Because I'm studying classical history at college as an additional course. Why? Because you don't want to get a job. <laughs> Why? Because he's a lazy good for nothing. I resent that remark. Why? <laughs> Will you please stop saying why? Why? Because I said so. Okay, Uncle Desmond, you're the boss. Oh, it's gonna be nice having her around, isn't it? Why? <laughs> Man, Gloria's got no taste. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Bodacious. <laughs> Don't you need a kid, I presume? Gloria, the adult, I guess. Yes, and you better get used to that name because that's who you got to ask if you want to touch anything in here in the future. And do you usually go around using people's things without asking first? Yeah. Well, you're not going to do it to me, OK? The agreement is you sleep in this room, not trash the place. Gloria. What have you done to my tapes? Nothing. Can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. Do you normally dress like that? <laughs> yes, I do. And if you must know, I like it. I'm glad I'm not your sister. <laughs> yeah, well, check it. I'm my brother. How do you think I feel? <laughs> Listen, if you was my sister, I'd soon slap that grin off your face. <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to shout at her. I want us to be nice to Daisy, please. Mom, look at my room. Please. OK, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like jazz? Or are you just posing? I like jazz. He played with Charlie Parker. Of course he did. Miles the Bird and Philonius. They are excellent D's men. Brubeck, though, not so bodacious. Wow, you're a bit forward for a nine-year-old, aren't you? No, it's just that your sister's a bit backward, dude. <laughs> See, it's not like I'm a jazz freak, cos I'm into real music. Oh, yeah? So what sort of music are we talking here? We're talking iced tea, boogie down productions, flavour flavour. No, we're talking, man. You're also talking Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Nah, man. <laughs> nah, they're soft, man. I'm still a kid, remember? <laughs> Yeah, you're safe, man. Oh, the arm's length. <laughs> hey, where you get that ring from? Um, your room? <laughs> and another thing, that chick could eat. She's a bottomless pit. You know, she had five dumplings last night. Five? five. <laughs> then she had four chicken drumsticks, rice, peas, two glasses of sauce up, juice, and she still wanted afters. <laughs> Matthew, what? Well, isn't there an old African saying on this subject? <laughs> no. But I know what an old Guyanese would say. That's a whole heap of food. <laughs> but tell me something. Tell me something. Where is she now? Gone to the supermarket with Shirley. You sure they have enough food over there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much longer I can take that little rat in my room. She's rummaging for all my things. Yes, and she messed up all my tape. She put them all out of order. Listen, I know we're supposed to treat her with kid gloves, but I like to use boxing gloves on her. <laughs> yeah, I want to strangle her. Mm. You could write a whole Stephen King novel about what I'd like to do to her. <laughs> you felt like that? Yes, I do. Well, hold on a minute. I thought you liked her. Well, I mean, you're always smiling at her. That's to stop this snarl. <laughs> OK, where's the kid we all love to hate? I think he just walked through the door. <laughs> I think you know who I mean, Father. Uh, this looks like a conspiracy. What have you done with her? You haven't chopped her up and put her in the freezer, have you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Michael. Stupid boy. <laughs> we wanted to do a lot worse than that just now on the phone. Quite frankly, I'm shocked that grown-up people would want to be so vicious to a kid. Have you met her? Well, no, but look, I think Mother's doing a great job helping out with these children. The least we can all do is support her. I mean, there must be a collective age of about, what, 180? 280, if you count poor five. <laughs> and you can't deal with a nine-year-old? 
<laughs> you should be ashamed of yourselves. Michael, I asked you over here to use your charm to speak to your mother about this nine-year-old. I didn't ask you over here to make fools out of us. No, of course not. You can do that yourself. <laughs> Ah, here they come. Oh, mother! Let me help oh, you with Michael. those. Thank you. Here, take these upstairs. <laughs> come on. Uh, hello. I bet you're Daisy, aren't you? You enjoying your ice cream? Yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> uh, can I have some? Sure. Isn't this nice? Hmm? Everyone's here to show Daisy what a happy family is like. Yeah, but Mum, Michael's not here. Precisely. That's why I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be a minute. <laughs> Did you enjoy your treat today, Daisy? What treat? Didn't Mum take you to the cinema? Oh! Yeah. Well, did you enjoy it? Yeah. Ever thought of becoming a film critic? <laughs> right, last clue. 14 across. Youth resisting the norm. Eight and ten letters. Well, it's nice to see everybody having such a nice time. <laughs> Look, I found some board games. Ah, oh, good. Board games for bored people. Bodacious. <laughs> right, Daisy, your choice. What game would you like to play first? Choose Monopoly. It's the only time I have any money or property. Personally, I prefer games that challenge the intellect and fire the imagination. Shirley, do you have Cluedo? <laughs> this is supposed to be for Daisy. What about Snakes and Ladders? Yeah, I used to be better at this game. Well, right? you never used to cheat, and you lost most of the cards. Man, no, 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 you no, shut up, bro. Shirley, no, control your children. What do you mean, my children? Desmond Shirley is right. They're your children as well. Yeah. Who asked you anything? Yes, Papa. Who asked you anything? <laughs> There's an old African saying, a mouse should never come between a lion and a lioness. Who are you calling a mouse? <laughs> a part of the family. Oh, and I thought you were part of the furniture. No, you see nothing. Uh, so all of this is my fault? Yes. yes. <laughs> what about happy families? <laughs> I'm sorry about this, Daisy. Look, Mum, this just isn't working, man. Is it all if we just chip one time? Yeah, it's not as if we didn't try. See you later, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for a lovely evening, Shirley. Yes, we must do this again soon. Um, I'll see them out. As long as it's just to the door and not to the pub. Oh, Shirley! Look, I just want to have a word with you after I put Daisy to bed. Uh, please. All right. Let's have a game of dominoes downstairs. That's a game I can beat you at. No, it's a game I can beat you oh, 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 oh. No, 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 Daisy. Desmond doesn't like children scribbling on his newspaper. Sean and Gloria used to do the same thing. Now, tell me, what's up? It's nothing, really. I'm just bored. Well, tomorrow we'll do something really exciting, I promise. What? Better tonight? Much better. Now, off you go and brush your teeth. OK. Yeah. Daisy? Yeah? You finished the crossword. Yeah. Youth resisting the norm. Juvenile delinquent. He's a man. <laughs> Can I go and brush my teeth now? Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Of all the kids in all the world, and Shirley had to choose her. I mean, the thing about choosing is to choose the best. But children do seem to be different today. What do you mean, different? Well, when I was a child, if I misbehaved, my father only had to say one word and I'll get... <laughs> Your father spoke to you? When I was a child, my father only had to look at me and I'd get... <laughs> look! When I was a child, my father only had to think at me and I'll get... <laughs> you know what that Daisy was? Yeah! <laughs> One day with me and you'd see the difference. But she's been here two full days already. At least she's going tomorrow. A long time between now and tomorrow. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. 
Shirley, how nice of you to include me once again in the specially extended family occasion. Where's the food? Is <laughs> it all ready? <laughs> no pork pie. We're doing something special before lunch. Everybody got pencil and paper? Oh, it's a bit alternative, Mum. I mean, what are we supposed to do? Right until we're full? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mother, whatever this entertained Daisy session is, I've got short tennis at 2 o'clock, so we better hurry up. What's short tennis? It's for people who are short of friends. Desmond <laughs> Andrews reporting for duty, sir. Right, Desmond, sit down, please. Uh, uh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, isn't this nice? It'd be nice if there was food on the table. Mm. Pop pan. Shirley's trying to tell us something. Thank you, Matthew. Well, today I thought we might entertain Daisy with a few games. Mm. Uh, Shirley, my little sugar plum, you forget yesterday. Ah, but today's going to be different. Today, I thought we might exercise our brains. Popeye, you can go. <laughs> Mother, I exercise my brain all week at the bank. Yeah, then you come down here and exercise your big math. <laughs> That's enough. Now then, the rules of the game are no cheating, no copying, and no conferring. This is going to be very difficult, eh, Popeye? <laughs> and the first game is Mental arithmetic. Oh. Well, I think I'll set this one out. I left my glasses down. <laughs> it's all right, Uncle Desmond. I brought them up for you. <laughs> Thank you, Daisy. <laughs> Ready? You're allowed to write down the problem, but the sum you have to do in your head. What is 13 times 8? <laughs> by four times 36. <laughs> Michael. Such a cheap man. A mother, everybody uses calculators these days. I don't. Mum, was that divided by 36 Shh. or was it? I lost my place now. <laughs> no cheating. <laughs> I've got it. At last. The answer is 935. 936. <laughs> you know something? Daisy's right. 302. <laughs> Try and keep up, Popeye. It's a fix. Oh, such a good loser, aren't you, Michael? <laughs> right. The next round is general knowledge. Would someone else like to set the question? Oh, yes, no. I have one. <laughs> uh, not too difficult for Daisy, Matthew. No. Name the seven dwarfs. Um, uh, happy. Huh? Grumpy. Uh, dozy. Oh, you would get that one, wouldn't you? <laughs> You're wrong, it's dopey. Same thing. Happy, grumpy, grumpy dozy. 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 Sleazy. Who? Sleazy, Gloria. How many so far? Oh, no. Grumpy, snoozy. Four. Duppy. Duppy. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, Sleepy and Doc. Well done, Daisy. Can we try dudes? Right. It's my turn. I have a riddle. A man sets out on a donkey on Monday. He travels for two days and stays one night at an inn. He rests for a day. He travels three more days and arrives on Friday. How can that be? Arrives on Friday. Mm -hmm. I know. It was a leap year. Nope. And no. <laughs> it was on the fourth day. Nope. No, no, Gloria, he traveled by night. No. Nope. The clocks went back. No. <laughs> he crossed the equator. Nah. He ditched the donkey and took Concord. <laughs> no, no, no. None of you have got it. Not even Daisy. <laughs> Could you just repeat that, please, Uncle Desmond? Of course. <laughs> a man sets out on a donkey on Monday. He travels for two days and stays the night at an inn. He rests for two days, then travels for three more days and arrives on Friday. How can that be? The donkey's name was Friday. Right. Uh... <laughs> you never said the donkey had a name? That's the point, Popeye. I would like to know what the point of this cheap, humiliating, unamusing, time-wasting exercise has been. I mean, a donkey got... Go... Eon, eon, he always has to win. <laughs> It showed us one thing, Michael. Daisy didn't enjoy our childish games yesterday because she, she's more perceptive and intelligent than any of us realized. Hmm. 
and I'm gonna have a word with her teachers first thing on Monday morning. Is that a good idea, Daisy? Bodacious. Yes, totally triumphant. <laughs> You hear that? Hear what? That, my friend, is the sound of peace. Now, there's a silly word, peace. <laughs> you never know what it means. You can have a hair peace. Or you can have war and peace. Or you could have my favorite word in the whole galaxy, universe, and space, rice and peace. <laughs> <laughs> Your definition of peace is no children. Correct. Oh, come on, Desmond. After a while, you'd miss them, even Michael. Nope. Well, you were even singing Daisy's praises yesterday before she left. Well, that's because I knew she was an exceptional child. Ah, oh, Desmond. You seem like me when I was a kid. Nobody understood me. Nothing's changed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do hope we see her again soon. Daisy certainly raised the level of intellectual ambience here. Eh, hey, pork pie? What does that mean? <laughs> well, I'm sure she'd miss us too. Hmm. Ah, it was lovely to see her being part of a family again. Well, what do you expect? It's the Ambrose touch. Pity you don't work all the time. <laughs> Michael. You know, I've been thinking about your mother and father, and about your desire to hear the patter of tiny feet again. So until such time as I or the other two offspring decide to reproduce, I bought you something that will bring you some joy and buy me some time. the decanter, and don't forget my special little vase for the table. I hope this is worth my while, Mother. I had an important engagement tonight. Who will, Michael? Hmm? Uh, just somebody. You mean anybody? <laughs> I went out with anybody once. Then I met somebody. Now I've got nobody. Oh. <laughs> there, there, poor pie. What do you my decanter set? I was saving that for when we went back home. Uh, excuse me, I thought this was my 10th anniversary present. Well, I don't want the Martins using it. Gloria, put it on the table. But I want it. Please, on the table. <laughs> Every year is the same thing. Same arguments about the same plates and the same glasses. If you don't like them, why'd you have them to dinner? Well, your mother said... Father said... <laughs> Baldwin Martin is a very good friend, and he's done quite well for himself. He's done OK. He's got a very nice Bentley. Yes. And a not-too-dingy five-bedroom house in the country. Yes. <laughs> Has he got a Bentley? You should keep in touch with old friends. I remember Baldwin Martin in Guyana. He always had money. Yes, he was shrewd even then. Shrewd? <laughs> he used to sell sour mango to any fool who would buy them two cents each. It's just as well we know what he was all about. Sounds like an intelligent businessman to me. Yeah, well, if you all knew what it was like, how come he did so well? Some of us didn't have any common sense. Uh, <laughs> you never fought him, Dad. Every time. We used to call your dad the laxative man. <laughs> well, that's all in the past now. Uh, where is Sean? Sean, I really don't see anything to get upset about. Yeah, well, you wouldn't. Oh, come on, Sean, it's only a film. Only a film? Yes. <laughs> the director's a genius, a master. Spike! And you made me miss it. <laughs> miss it? We only missed the first 30 seconds. Well, that's what I mean. It was a 30-second tracking shot. Crucial. <laughs> sure, you've only been reading The Guardian for three weeks and suddenly you're a film critic. Yeah, well, the tickets cost a lot of money, Colette. We went Dutch, Sean. No, that's a waste of time talking to you. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Well, I mean, next time I take you to see Rambo 5, at least you'll understand that. <laughs> Colette. Go read your Guardian. <laughs> Lovely 
Lovely Shirley. <laughs> really nice, Mum. As always, my dear, compliments cannot describe the beauty of your cooking. <laughs> I thought your rather liberal use of pepper was very interesting. <clears throat> yes, very authentic, uh, ethnic. <laughs> very authentically ethnic. <laughs> I liked it, Mrs. Ambrose. I don't suppose you get much Guyanese food in Surrey, do you, Samantha? <laughs> no. I wish we did. Uh, more wine, anyone? Yum, yeah, fill it up. This is just the sweetest little vase, Mrs. Ambrose. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's my favourite vase. I hope you don't mind, but could I possibly have it? Oh, it's a matter <laughs> If Shirley didn't know us better, she might think that was impolite. It's OK, isn't it, Shirley? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, dear. Thank you, Mrs. Ambrose. <laughs> Samantha, wouldn't you like to go and listen to some music with Gloria and Sean? I'd love to, Mrs. Ambrose. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> Desmond. You hear from back home lately? Well, I hear everybody's doing fine. You going back this year? Oh, well, we're saving up. Oh, still saving. <laughs> oh, Christmas. I'm taking the whole family back home for Christmas. Uh, you are? Are you? You is? <laughs> I was there a couple of weeks ago, and things are very hard, you know, Desmond. Remember where we all used to play? The old community hall? Nope. Was I talking to you, Pork Pie? No, but I answer in any way. The old community hall? Well, it's in bad need of repair. It's a real shame what's become of the old place. I don't remember it. You've been away a long time, Porky. OK? <laughs> anyway, I have decided to set up a fund to refurbish it. And I'm asking for donations from Ghanese business people throughout the UK to get the ball rolling, as it were. Really? <laughs> I know you're only a small business, so I'm not looking for much. Just whatever you can afford. I remember the church, but I can't remember any community hall. It's a community hall in the church I'm talking about, Porky. <laughs> when you would like to help. Splendid. I've got a bit of spare cash lying about in the back. Super! <laughs> in what account, Father? I knew you'd agree, Des. Um, what are we talking about? Ten pounds? Twenty pounds? <laughs> it needs major repair. I'm putting in a thousand. A thousand pounds! <laughs> are we refurbishing a hall or building it? Uh, don't worry, Des. I wouldn't dream of asking you for that kind of money. It's rather nice. The local people have decided to name the hall the Martin Memorial Hall after us. What for? The size of our contribution. Well, how much would it take to wipe your name out and put my name on it? <laughs> well, if you could top our donation, then the Ambrose Memorial Hall it would obviously be. But that's a lot of money, Desmond. We'd hate to put you through any hardship. Hardship? There won't be any hardship. What there? Shall <laughs> Is the lady of the house in full agreement? Pokwai, let's go buy some mangoes. <laughs> I'll help you. Bye-bye, <laughs> laxative man. <laughs> Came here, we thought things would be a bit better. Yes. Oh, well, don't get me wrong, we came to work and to work hard. Yes. Yes. Things were hard back then, whatever island you came from. Yes. 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 But we are hard working people. Yes. Yes. We love our country. Yes. Yes. We love our people. Yes. Yes. And we want to help our people. Yes. 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 We want to give them our money. <laughs> that was a very good speech, Desmond. <laughs> yes. A very good speech, Desmond. Look, ma, we want to help the people of Guyana. I agree. <laughs> Bert, put in for me now. <laughs> I don't have any money. You put in for me. Look, man, it's only money. There. 
What about my haircut? What's more important, helping your people or your haircut? Me haircut. <laughs> Billy, sit down and take off your jacket. This, I ain't got any money, mate. All right, then, I'll have the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> How much you putting in, Matthew? Uh, nothing. What do you mean, nothing? Well, there's an old African saying. <laughs> Never give away your money. That's right. <laughs> Popeye? Me? Well, you know. Yeah, no, I don't know. Well, recession and thing. No, no, I don't even know what I'm saying and thing, man. Put some money in the tray. God, man. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Bus fare. <laughs> Thank you for your generosity, Lewis. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Oh, listen, I'm late. Have you got any change? Great, thanks. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We'll have to hold a raffle, and you will sell the tickets. A raffle? What's the prize? Mangoes? Shut up and listen, pork pie. The prize will be a bottle of rum. Is that all? No, people not gonna buy tickets for just one bottle of rum. You have to dress it up a bit. Yes. yes. You mean you gotta make it look nice? Yes. yes. <laughs> you mean it's gotta be presented tastefully? Yes. 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 In something bright and sparkling like a cut glass decanter set? Yes! yes. No! Oh. No! <laughs> You've got a visit. Hello, Sean. <laughs> I was just passing, and I felt I just had to see you. See me? Well, how many other Sean's are there in this house? Oh, you've got a computer. Oh, <laughs> I've got one just like it. You show me yours and I'll show you mine, eh? <laughs> mm. <laughs> this is Samantha. Thanks for calling, but right now I'm... Really busy. I know, Sean, but I can help you. Help me? Yes. But first we have to get to know each other. <laughs> What star sign are you, Sean? Oh, well, I'm... Aquarius, aren't you? Yeah. I knew it. I'm a Leo. <laughs> <laughs> We're well suited. We are? Yes. Air and fire. Air fans fire and makes it burn more brightly. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> what package have you got? Package? For your computer? Oh, I see. Well, I haven't quite put the package on yet. In fact, I won't get the computer till Saturday. It's going to be a present for my dad. <laughs> to celebrate what? Nothing in particular. Sorry, I thought I could smell burning. <laughs> <laughs> Shave the man he's waiting. Shave? Shave who? Where are you going? You can't stay shaving. <laughs> There's more look around you. It's nearly lunchtime and you're frightening everybody off with this stupid raffle. So what's this? A dummy? <laughs> How many tickets do you want? <laughs> now you see what you've done? Put your mind on the job. My mind is on the job is the customers that have to wait. Desmond, this is a business. And are you worrying about his Baldwin Martin's money? This is about more than money, surely. This is about preserving the Ambrose name. This is about squandering the Ambrose savings. What time you call this? How many tickets you sell? Desmond, don't be so rude. OK, OK. My dear Matthew and Popeye, how <laughs> delicious to see you. <laughs> Did you have a nice morning? And how many tickets you sell? But none. Hopeless, hopeless. But I remember to buy the mango for you, Shirley. Thank you, Popeye. Ali! Oh, there's me old son. Those raffle tickets, what a way to meet the girls. I tell you what, I was talking to this girl, right? Raffle tickets in hand. Next thing, I was having dinner with her. Yeah, but how many tickets did she buy? Well, she didn't want to buy any, but she said she wouldn't mind going to Guyana for a holiday, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sean. What time did you get in last night? About 12. Oh, good, good. How many tickets you sell? None. None? Why not? 
Well, the prize is alcohol, Pops, and it's illegal for me to procure money from adolescents for the consumption of spirits. You mean to tell me you come in this house at midnight last night as if it's a hotel and you don't even have the appreciation to sell two raffle tickets for your father? Dad, I could get arrested. Well, no one seems to understand that a man is coming at the end of the week for his money and we don't have any yet. Oh, I'm sorry, Desmond, but it's you who don't have any money yet. <laughs> well, you're not still going about this far-fit scheme in Guyana, are you, Father? We're we talking about helping our people, Michael. Our people? I'm British and proud of it. Oh. <laughs> Typical backward buppy mentality. Oh, <laughs> I think the whole thing is pathetic. I mean, who's organising contracts and international money orders? And who's the accountant, Father? Do you know? And what if this raffle thing is a complete failure? Where is the money coming from? Because it definitely is not coming out of the shop account. Yes, and it's definitely not coming out of my holiday money. All right. All right. That's it. You're going to watch the Ambrose name forgotten by family and friends back home. You're going to watch the humiliated that Balmain Martin comes for his money. You're going to watch the opportunity for the Ambrose name to be revered throughout the whole of Guyana, snatched away forever. Is that what you want? Well, yes, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, don't give up now, Des. We can sell those tickets if we put our minds to it. It just takes a bit of technique. Even Matthew here can do it. Do you really think so? Yeah, of course you can, Math. Have a go. Um, give me some money for this raffle ticket now. <laughs> oh, Matt, you got a charm, haven't you? <clears throat> Paul Pie, you have a go. Who, me? I don't even remember the community hall. Look, you, oh, you... My name is Desmond Ambrose. <laughs> I'm trying to sell these raffle tickets to assist the needy people of Guyana. Uh, can I tempt you? <laughs> no, mate, no. <laughs> Look, you've got to do it like this. I ain't joking, I ain't lying. I'm talking about a bargain the likes of which me and you have never seen. I've sold this stuff from Timbuktu to Bognor Regis and I have never, I repeat, never had a complaint. Now, excuse me, missus, forget whiskey, forget brandy, forget methylated spirits. I'm talking about spontaneous combustion, internal incineration, we that burn through the brickwork of your local. I'm talking about the good old-fashioned Ray and Winston's overproof 2,000% rum. Now, I've got three tickets left and you need one to get one, so don't waste my time. I'll tell you straight, it ain't legal, it ain't safe, but if you want to shut your mother-in-law up once and for all and still <laughs> take the next door's rock liner, then get one now. Any takers? <laughs> Done. Result. Uh, 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 that's my shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> What's with the shades, guys? Well, this is a ragamuffin area, isn't it, Lee? Oh, look, you don't believe all that media rubbish, do you? Yes. yes. <laughs> look, hey, remember what I taught you, yeah? Yes. yes. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> can't do it your way. Of course you can, Matt. Look, I ain't joking, I ain't lying. I'm talking about a bargain which you and me ain't see the lights of. I've sold this stuff from here. It's just not me. All right, then, how would you do it in Africa? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of your attention. 
Most of you know me, and I recognize many of your heads. <laughs> yes, man. Hurry up, I won't finish the game. Well, all right. <laughs> most of you know me, and I know most of you. We go back a long way, many of us. So I can be honest. I need your help, and I need it now. But I ain't asking for something for nothing. But what you do may benefit many people in Guyana. And all it will cost is the price of a raffle ticket. The prize is this beautiful commemorative... <laughs> Can you shut that, please? It's private. <sighs> that wasn't funny, Samantha. Yes, it was. <laughs> Look, I'm fed up with telling you, Samantha. Do you know what your problem is, Sean? You don't know how to loosen up. <laughs> Give me the Give me a <laughs> Sean. He's an Ambrose boy. He can't help it. You could at least unlock the door, Sean. I want an explanation now. Helping her with her homework. Gloria, I can do without your sarcasm right now. And Colette. Well, you should know me better than that. Can I have some privacy, please, Gloria? You're welcome. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if I were you, I'd wipe that smile off my face and sit down, because I've got something to say, and I'm only going to say it once, so listen up. <laughs> Sean. Look, you can't keep turning up in my room because I've got work to do and you're disturbing me. I could just about tolerate it before, but that little stunt shows me where you're really at and I don't like it. OK, Sean. And plus, I don't appreciate your dad's little scheme to help our loved ones back home. I mean, he's got dad and the whole shop doing all kinds of stupid things just so you can have a silly little community hall named after him. Yes, Sean. And to be quite honest, you're just like him. So take my advice. Do yourself a favour and stop acting like a sport brat. Do you understand? Yes, Sean. And one final thing. Yes, Sean. Give my mum a vase back. <laughs> yes, Sean, OK. Sean. What? I've got a little admission to make. How little? Well, actually, it's a very big little admission. <laughs> OK, let's hear it. There isn't going to be an Ambrose community hall. What? What do you mean? It's my mum's idea. We need a swimming pool for our house. <laughs> and mum thought this would be a good way to raise the finance. <laughs> swimming pool? So what, you mean your dad's a fraud? <laughs> yes, I suppose he is. Well, haven't you got any public pools in your area? Yes. So, what's wrong with them? Oh, they're public. <laughs> Everybody else has got their own. So, what are you going to do about this? Me? Yes, you. Twelve hundred pounds. Thank you, Desmond. Well, no rest for the wicked, eh, my dear? Why, well, you must be tired, then. Oh, <laughs> God, oh, we have so many people to see. Oh, come on, dear. Uh, Baldwin. Yes? I bumped into an old school friend of mine yesterday. He just came back from Guyana. Really? Yes, he saw the community hall. Said they rebuilt it last year. Oh, well, um... So it could hardly need refurbishing again, could it? Oh, my God. I can't stop now, Mum. We're going swimming. Swimming? Where? Our local pool. A public pool? That's right, Mum. Later's. Public pool? <laughs> yes, there's a very good pool up the road. I swim there, actually. And me. And me. I expect there are quite a few pools in your area, Baldwin. Yes. Uh... Private ones, probably. Have you got one? We're saving up. Oh, still saving. <laughs> uh, Michael, how much do you think it'll cost to build a pool? Difficult to say, Father. But I suppose you could make a start with £1,200. Well, that would be dipping a toe in the water, so to speak. <laughs> all right, all right, this has gone far enough. But I'm sorry you're adopting this attitude, Desmond. But you must appreciate that when you reach my position in life, one has certain standards to keep up. If you had achieved anything in life, you would be doing the same. But what a woman rank. <laughs> <laughs> See you all. Uh, 
I keep smiling. Get in the car. Uh, two bit, bit. Baldwin. Yes. The check. Pardon. The check. Yours, father. What? Well, you can't take a joke. <laughs> Another bill? Another bill for you? This one's for me. And that's your bill. <laughs> oh, no! What's wrong, Cheryl? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord! What's wrong, Dad? What is it? It's only Sue Sue. Hello, my loving sister and brother-in-law. <laughs> Desmond and Shirley, as I affectionately know... I'll be visiting you on Friday the 13th. See you then. Love, Susu. Friday the 13th? That's today. Unlucky for some. If your sister's coming to say it's unlucky for us. <laughs> she didn't say she was coming to stay. Oh, she lives in Jamaica. We live in Peckham. She ain't exactly coming back. <laughs> I know, Desmond, but she is my sister. You mean after all the wicked things that woman has said about you, you call her your sister? Well, I still call you my husband, don't I? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not having that lying, cheating, scheming, cantankerous, adulterous, flirtatious <laughs> woman in this house. Well, just speak your mind, Dad. <laughs> now, my sister is not like that. She's just high-spirited. Well, look, if we explain to her that she could only stay for a couple of days, then she wouldn't take advantage. <laughs> Hello? Home office? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm afraid she's... she's not in. Mr. Turner, yes. Mr. Turner, I tell her that you called. That was for Susan, wasn't it? Yes. The woman giving out our telephone number, she didn't reach here yet. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Tiger. How do you feel after last night? Last night? Oh, I love a man who's modest. You do? You're like Clark Kent, aren't you? Mild-mannered assistant bank manager by day, but give you a phone booth or a wine bar, and you become Superman. <laughs> oh, yes, the wine bar. Uh, did I, um... Did you? Did I do anything embarrassing? Oh, well, I wasn't embarrassed, sir, but then uh, I'm not easily shocked. <laughs> no. Don't worry, sir. You've given a whole new meaning to the term hands-on management. <laughs> you say don't worry. <clears throat> Hello? Reverse charges? OK, why not? Hello? Hello, Michael. Speaking. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. Listen, my nephew, I want you to come and pick me up now. Oh, this is what I'd love to, but you see, I'm at work now and I can't leave the office. What do you mean you can't? I'm your auntie. You know how much it costs to make this phone call? Yes, I do. 50 pence every 30 seconds. That's right. <laughs> if you don't come and pick me up, I will stay on the line until you do. <laughs> <laughs> Want to bet? Michael? Michael? <laughs> Michael? Uh, now, Mandy. Yes, sir. About last night. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you see, we're both consenting adults, and as adults, we sometimes do things that... Things, sir? <laughs> yes, Mandy, things. You see, when one's had too much to drink, one says certain things, and one does certain things that one wouldn't 
ordinarily do. Ah, but you know what they say, sir. When one has had too much to drink, the real one is revealed, as you were last night. <laughs> Thank you, Mandy. That was most comforting. Mr. Ambrose's office. Can I speak to Michael? Uh, yes, it's for you, sir. <clears throat> Hello? Hello, Michael. <laughs> huh? But I'm using the telephone booth next door. I'm in last 50p. I didn't hang up on your fancy phone. <laughs> He's still being charged. You better come and pick me up. <laughs> Where are you? The station. OK. Birmingham. New space to be precise. Birmingham? <laughs> an unreasonable man on my pork pie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who said you are, man? Oh, come on, Des. You're always saying that people don't do enough to help their families. The trouble is, Susu is not Desmond's family. She's my sister. I'm Desmond's sister-in-law. More like an outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there is one solution to this problem. If you don't want to put her up for a few days, I will. You? you? <laughs> yeah, me. Any objections? Yes. You're too young. <laughs> for what? We're only talking about my spare room, pork pie. Hey, I get it. You're jealous. No, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Because you know she likes younger men. Well, she can stay at my place. I've got a room free which was vacated last week. Who, you? Yes, and what's wrong with that? <laughs> well, you're not too young, that's for sure. <laughs> I think that I should put her up. Because Susu and I have a history. We're from the same country, and as her fellow countryman, I know how to make her happy. Susu! <laughs> you look uh, all right. <laughs> Good be all, Michael. Auntie Susu, don't you ever, ever do that again. Uh, uh, you know what happens to me when somebody tells me not to do something? Tell him, Cheryl. Well, what your Auntie Susu means, Michael, is thank you. Never again. <laughs> You're going to greet me? <laughs> Both sides, Desmond. This is Europe, after all. <laughs> so you you can never marry a man like that. You lack passion. So, I see nothing change in the shop. You still your pork pie? Hello, Susu, darling. You still here to match you? I thought you had more sense. <laughs> Hello, Tone. <laughs> Susu? OK, I'll come to the point. I'm only passing through. Have some fun, you know what I mean? <laughs> I just want to shake up myself on the dance floor <laughs> and ruin up my waist. <laughs> Desmond, you'll be willing to put me up. <laughs> Isn't that right? Um, uh, yeah. Yes, yes. But uh, this is a family home, and the things that I have in mind is uh, strictly for adults only. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've decided to stay elsewhere. Uh, anywhere in particular? I don't know yet. Well, you're most welcome to stay with me, <laughs> Susie. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. But it's not my mind that needs stimulating. <laughs> you know what I mean, Port Pie? Come on. What's this? You know them say that baldness is a sign of virility? <laughs> they do? Oh, yes. <laughs> How about uh, me and you going to a restaurant to start off with 7.30? After that, who knows? <laughs> Sounds good to me. Good. <laughs> can I leave up my bags at your house? I'll go one better than that. You can stay. <laughs> you sure you can afford it? <laughs> yes, one. Give pork pie some money. Gladly, my little sugar pork. <laughs> Keep the change. <laughs> and pork pie? Keep the lady. <laughs> Susu, uh, a Mr. Turner from the home office rang. He wants you to ring him back. You all right? Yes, uh, I'm fine. <laughs> what did you tell him? Nothing. Let's keep it that way. You ready for it, pie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Good evening, madame. Thank you, waiter. Thank you. May I take your hat, sir? No. <laughs> See anything you like? Yes! <laughs> On the menu! <laughs> you don't raise your voice in a restaurant. They might think you're ignorant, but you don't have to act it, OK? OK, OK, sorry. It's just that you keep looking at the waiter. I, I just exercise in my eyes. <laughs> well, rest them now. So tell me, Susu, what's been happening? You didn't go back to Jamaica? No. I was staying with my ex-husband's sister in Birmingham, but uh, we outgrew each other. What do you mean, outgrew each other? She threw me out. <laughs> Can you imagine that after all I'd done for her? Thrown out like a dirty piece of garbage. <laughs> Just because the telephone bill was 400 pounds. What? It wasn't all my phone calls. I was missing my sons, and I hadn't caught up with the latest gossip in Jamaica. I was homesick. And lonely? You know the worst thing? After about six months, they said that I should earn my keep. I had to do all the washing up and cleaning for them. Why didn't you get a job? Because I'm not a resident of this country. Well, how did you survive? Well, you know, I had some rich admirers. But I'm fed up with all that now. They're only interested in one thing. I'm not, Susu. You're not? Why not? <laughs> because I love you, Doreen. Don't call me Doreen! <laughs> I know it's my name, but people only call me it when they're angry with me. Because I love you, Susu. Some wine, sir? No, champagne! Any particular champagne, sir? Yes! Champagne, champagne! <laughs> A bottle of your finest. Are you sure, sir? Yes, sir. Now go away. <laughs> Just exercising. Susu, I have loved you ever since the first time I saw you. You might think I'm an old man making a fool of myself, but you're no spring chicken. <laughs> and as time goes by, we need each other. Poor pie. Let's just take things slowly. Huh? OK. You really love me? Yeah, man. <laughs> Good. Eighty-five pounds, sir. What? <laughs> Do nicely. <laughs> Poor Pai. Will you marry me? I will. I, will, I do. I, I, yes, I do. I mean, <laughs> Yaman! <laughs> trying to do? Kill me? No. She might know. Who is she? Are you talking about my intended? Susu. Listen, Desmond, we've been friends for many years, but when I told you I was getting married, the first word to come out of your mouth was, why? <laughs> that, that's great pork pie. Well done, like any normal person. But pork pie? Yes, hush up, Desmond. <laughs> All right. And I wasn't born yesterday. And she might be taking me for a ride. Well, at least it will be a happy one. Everybody always seen me as an old fool, even when I was young. Well, we roll and we might be foolish, but we love each other. You know what it's like living on your own at my age? Why well, do you think I spend so much time at the barber shop? Because I don't want to go home. Then now I can look forward to going home. I'm not young anymore, Desmond. And at my age, you find happiness where you can. I thought that you, of all persons, would understand. It's all right for you. You have Shirley, D have his S. Well, P wants his S too. Is that all right with you? <laughs> so long as you're happy. I am. Good. Good. <laughs> Good. Best man? Best man. Um, there's a lady outside to see you, sir. Who is it? I'm not sure, um, but she said, tell him me here and me can't wait. <laughs> me need some money for an engagement ring. Susu, okay. 
Uh, Mandy, before you let her in. Yes, sir. What exactly did happen at the wine bar? And, and let's have the truth. <sighs> OK. We were in the bar. It was all very jolly until a group of yobs in grey suits, and I imagine grey underpants as well, <laughs> started looking at us. One got the distinct impression they didn't like the fact that we were together. Anyway, they came over and asked me if I wanted better company, <laughs> to which you replied, if theirs was the best company on offer, they better call in the receivers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, the head lob took a swing at you. You pinned him against the wall, gave him a piece of your mind. Oh, you were magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, um, all that happened? Sadly, yes, sir. How did you get a hangover? Well, the whole place bought you drinks. Mandy? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You're a brick. Oh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a double wedding. <laughs> Come in. You wanted to see me, my loving sister, Shirley? <laughs> Doreen, stop your stupidness and sit. I knew you were angry. You only call me Doreen when you're angry. I am not angry, Doreen. You see? There you go again. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> this must be serious, because you don't know how to begin. Why is it that you always try my patience? Hmm? Why is it that after 50 odd years, I still feel responsible for you? You don't have to. Well, I do. And I think this time you're gone too far. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? I've no idea. Look, Doreen, don't act the innocent with me because it don't suit you. I see men eating out of your hand. I see you chew them up and spit them out. I see you flit from flower to flower like a butterfly. I see. Is jealous you're jealous? <laughs> <laughs> of you? Hmm? A woman your age whose life has amounted to nothing? Why should I be jealous of you? So what is it you want from me? I'm sick to death of your look down your nose attitude at me. You think your life better than mine? Look at it. Is this a product of years of hard work? Could this crummy wall be upon much of so <laughs> You think I want that? Doreen, don't you ever come into my house and insult me. So now put your backside on that chair before I push you down. <laughs> before in my life have I been so angry. You are trouble, Doreen. You always have been and you always will be. And I hate to see you bringing that trouble to others. You bleed them, suck them dry. You make me sound like a vampire. <laughs> I'm surprised that you go for pork pie. Uh, I mean, after all, you don't have no money. I love him, Shirley. No, you don't. You have never loved pork pie. If I had a pound for every time you called him an idiot, I could change the wallpaper <laughs> by a new sofa. <laughs> no, Doreen. I know what you're planning. I know why you're marrying pork pie and it ain't love. Shirley, why you can't believe me for once? Just this once. My loving sister, Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> Susu. So, 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 what am I going to do with you? You could make me a cup of tea. <laughs> and don't forget to take tea with five sugars. <laughs> Hello? Ah, yes. Just a minute. It's for you. Who is it? I don't know. Dear. Well, I told them you are already. And anyway, they must have heard everything because I didn't cover the mouthpiece. Hello. <laughs> Speaking. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. 
Five o'clock. Okay. So, so you all right? I must go and see pork pie. Susu? Susu! So, Matthew, <laughs> if pork pie gets married... Ah, when pork pie gets married? When pork pie gets married? I mean, he's not going to be coming round every day to sit with his little bosom buddy anymore, is he? Sean, pork pie has never been what I'd call a buddy or remotely connected with my bosom. <laughs> No, it always amazes me how you two can sit there, day in, day out. I mean, you're so different. What do you find to talk about? Well, we talk to you, don't we? <laughs> well, I don't know. Some of the best relationships are based on opposites. I mean, take Desmond and me, for example. That's right. People often ask me why I stay with you. <laughs> in reply, I tell them I'm too busy to find somebody else. <laughs> Well, I think Pork Pie will still come round here anyway. Yes, to get away from Susu. Oh, yes, <laughs> Mom. We promise we'll be more positive about the marriage. Oh, yes, darling. Uh, hey. Hello, everybody. I'd just like to show you all my new engagement ring bought for me by my new fiance, Porky Baby. <laughs> <laughs> With a little help from my nephew. However, we have some news to tell everybody. I don't know where to start. Well, you better hurry up. He'll be here soon. OK. You were right, Shirley, as usual. I didn't want to marry Pork Pie because I loved him. You didn't? Mm -hmm. You certainly didn't marry him for his money. No. <laughs> I wanted to marry Pork Pie because I wanted to stay in this country. I knew oh, it. I knew it. The truth right. is, I've outstayed my visit here. and. Mr. Turner from the home office traced me to Birmingham to deport me. My stupid sister-in-law gave him your number. After you talked to me, Cheryl, and I received a phone call, I felt I had to tell Pork Pie. I couldn't let him down. When I told him, do you know what that stupid man said? He said... He didn't care, and that he still loved me. For the first time in my life, somebody genuinely telling me them love me. Aww. So now I'm going. <laughs> Goodbye, Shirley. Thank you for everything. Gloria. Take Sean. Matthew, <laughs> this is ear meal. <laughs> Desmond. <laughs> Michael, you have the car? <laughs> so you're really going? When Mr. Turner from the home office comes, tell him I got. <laughs> I have a plane to catch. <laughs> Come on, poor pie. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. It's all right, ma. Don't worry. Everything turned out all right in the end. How can you say that? Well, I've got a fiance in Jamaica that I'm going to marry. All I need is a girlfriend here, and I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs>